Well, Wobble Lobble Dub Dub Motherfuckers, it is I, everyone's favorite jack of all trades with a foul mouth, Common Urban. And uh, today I've got a good one for you. I've got a book review. And uh, this book review was actually a bit of a request because I showed this book when I got it from Half Price. And uh, my good buddy, my good, you know, my really good friend, Jerry Borgett, was like, uh, would you do a book review on it when you read it? I said, yes, I, I will. And the book I am talking about is Titanic Tragedy. And before I begin, I just want to say thank you for everyone for subscribing. And, uh, yeah, you know, for all my new subscribers and all my OGs, Thank you so fucking much for the uh, subscribed, you know, this, you know, subscribing, becoming a member of the Commoners crew. I'll never miss any fun video. But before I begin, you know, it is, you know, you know, it's April. It is April. And uh, it is Titanic time again. Well, I always talk about the Titanic, but it's the anniversary, the 109th anniversary of the Titanic's maiden voyage. As people would probably say, April 10th. April 10th, 2021, would be the 109th anniversary of her leaving Southampton for a maiden voyage. But if you remember very, very closely, in my book review, Titanic Belfast Own, Titanic actually started her maiden voyage on the 2nd, when she left Belfast because she was carrying one fair paying passenger, the first class gentleman. So technically it would be April 2nd when the 109th anniversary of her maiden voyage would truly start, but you know, for odds and ends, we're just going to say April, April 10th. And of course, we all know April 14th and the 15th are big dates. Our, our, our beautiful lady back here, she, you know, she, she gets gouged by an iceberg and several hours later, you know, and she sinks beneath the waves. It's sad. Uh, 1,496 people drowned. Wow. It's a lot of people. But to kick off this, you know, series of anniversary tribute videos for the Titanic, I will be reviewing Titanic Tragedy, A New Look at the Lost Liner by the late, great John Maxton Graham. This is for you, Jerry. So basically, this book uh, says right here, Every catastrophe's impact inevitably diminishes with sufficient passage of time. But with the notoriety of one 1912 disaster, RMS Titanic's foundering on her maiden voyage to New York paradoxically keeps growing. Nearly a century on, the public seems unable to relinquish their favorite, their fevered preoccupation with the lost liner. Every aspect of that crossing argued for success. If not the fastest, Titanic was the world's largest and the most lavish steamship. She was brand new. She was said to be unsinkable. And White Star Senior Master Commodore Edward J. Smith strode the bridge. Yet at the same time, she was scandalously underquipped when lifeboats and her watertight compartments lacked critical height. Though owner J.P. Morgan and builder Lord Peary did not embark, a predictable passenger mix of the period did, a coterie of gilded American plutocrats, American-class Britons, and middle-class Britons, Frenchmen, Germans, and Scandinavians, and several hundred immigrants. Steaming through an admittedly clear night at imprudent speed, Titanic sideswiped a towering iceberg that sliced a 300-foot gash along her starboard bow. Two hours and 40 minutes later, she sank to the bottom. The death toll was horrific. Over 1,500 passengers and crew perished in the bitterly cold of the North Atlantic War. Actually, 1,496. Thanks to a providential, you know, providential wireless distress call, 703 were rescued by the little car, little canard or Carpathia. Carpathia, yeah, fuck. Maritime historian John Maxstone Graham, a Scottish American New Yorker, has written dozens of books about North Atlantic liners and Titanic tragedy after ushering Morse and Marconi onto the stage. He documents the vessel's design, construction, and departure from Southampton. Her passengers, lifeboat ordeal, their Carpathia rescue and memorials to her crew. He describes poignantly the performance of her eight gallant bandsmen who played on deck to the very end. None would survive. And additional historical bonuses include seven letters, obviously from a Titanic passenger. In fact, they were written by one of America's most intimate historians, Walter Lord, author of the seminal A Night to Remember of 1955. 
his devastating, yeah, his devastating parodies of about life aboard the doomed ship appear here for print in the first time anywhere. Improbable raconteur and shipboard inhabitor, Max Tone Graham has found in Titanic an utterly compelling and heartbreaking topic. He spends more than half of the year lecturing aboard ocean liners ashore. He lives in New York City. Well, now he's buried in New York City Cemetery, so God bless his soul. Anyway, this book documents the Titanic in a little bit of a different way. And I'll let, I'll let Max Tone Graham kind of, you know, recall it to you. Because he doesn't, he says here, uh, he says here that uh, I am less concerned with clearing, cleaning up loose ends than with creating what might be described as historical stepping stones, documenting events and episodes leading up to and emanating from the disaster. He talks about, you know, the creation of Morse and Marconi. He talks about Thomas Anders and you know, Harlan Wolf. Talks about where the Titanic left, you know, Southampton, at birth number 44. And then he goes to talk about the Carpathia, talks about the lifeboat ordeal, he talks about the uh, all the memorials in around the world for the Titanic, and the parody parody um, letters written by the late great Walter Lord. And the way that the book is laid out, you know, because he dedicated the book, dedicated to the memory of Walter Lord, 1917 to 2002. But uh, the way it goes, chapter one is the wireless miracle. Chapter 2, Glittering Night. Chapter 3, Horn Blown at Queen's Island. Chapter 4 is the Ocean Knock. Chapter 5, Into the Boats. Chapter 6, Survival Saga. Chapter 7, Safe Carpathia. Chapter 8, Crew Memoria. And Chapter 9 is Walter at Play. And then the Bibliography in your index. And basically, Mr. John Maxton Graham, I don't know what it's about his style of writing, but he's always had this amazing amazing way of telling just the you know just in writing I don't know how to explain it unless if you read a John Max Tone Graham book he's just just got this style that's just it's so inviting and at the same time it's so you know it's compelling and with Titanic tragedy he, he he opens the door into these what he, what he would call stepping stones into the evolution leading up to and what happened after the 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 sad you know tragedy of what happened to this beautiful you know queen of the White Star Line and so in overall Titanic tragedy I would give this five out of five two thumbs up and I give a lot of books that because well. For one thing, it's written by one of my favorite authors. Two, it's about the fucking Titanic. I mean, it's going to be good. And three, you know, like I said, it, it's compelling. Once you start with, once you start, like once you actually start, open this book up, and you read the dedication, you get to the content, and you read the preface, which is on page X and I, you start reading this, and you go through you just can't stop reading it until finally when you get to the last page like page 217 and you're just like there's no more no it's a gripping book if you love the titanic you want to understand more about the, these little aspects about the tragedy and about the ship and i know a lot of you will and i know jerry i know you probably will too get this book titanic Tragedy, A New Look at the Lost Liner by John Maxtone Graham. It's an amazing book. You guys will love it. I fucking guarantee it. And there you have it. That is my review of Titanic Tragedy. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back with you. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned because there will be plenty more Titanic related videos as we celebrate the life and legacy of not just the world's greatest passenger liner, but also everybody that sailed on her, that built her, and everyone that was related and, you know, connected with this great ship for the 109th anniversary. So, I hope you will come back. Until next time, it is I, Commodore Urban, staying out smooth seas and clear skies.
Happy sailing with all of you. God bless all of you. Stay healthy. Stay awesome. And be yourselves. Until next time. So long, my friends, and uh, happy sailing.